Welcome to Blender for Architects with the first tutorial on a very simple model getting camera and light right to make a, a super nice uh, high quality rendering in the cycles render of Blender. So the result will be, look, will be like that and <clears throat> Blender is yeah, it's a mess of thousands of menus. It's an ocean of menus which gives you all the uh, possibilities of the world to do whatever you like, but it's complicated to learn. So I want to show you the direct path through towards uh, uh, high quality uh, images. So train that. Our whole tutorials will follow this line. If you feel safe, then look around to other options. So this is a fast track towards good results. So let's start. First step, create a model. So we want to have a very simple one. We want to have a plane and then a cube uh, uh, positions on stage. So to add an object, we either go here and get this menu or we say Shift A and get the mesh and we want to have a plane. So now we want to change this plane in size and position. So we either go and take the tools here, which is a little un with a little complicate, or we can use the keys. For example, for uh, scaling, we have S. So now we either take the mouse and in the top left you see the scaling, the parameters, or you simply write 12. To check the results we have and confirm it. So to check we have these parameters. So these are the transformation parameters of this object. We can change it later. For example, we can say in X we only want to have six or go back. So this is our first element. Uh, now take, get the second one, a cube. It's always inserted to this pirate. You can put it here. So if I get a new one, I get the cube here. I don't like it. So, but to get the pivot here, go um, go C, Shift C, and the pivot is here. Or go Shift S, and you get the snap menu, and you say cursor to center. So this is where you want to have the new objects uh, instantiated. So now go to cube. And we are here. This is our setup. Now we have to move it up. Instead of S for scale, it's G for translation. Go G. Constrain it to the Z axis. Now you see this axis. And write 1 because it should be 1. And you can control it with these uh, parameters here on, on in the panel. Confirm it. And here you see how our object is uh, specified. So that's the first step. Second step, the material. <clears throat> if I select this object, it's always a right mouse button or command click with the trackpad. And you see that these two editors, the 3D view editor and the outline editor, they are in sync. So if I selected the object here, it's selected here. If I select this here, you see the plane is selected and vice versa. So here you see the object or in, uh, organized in space. Here you see them in hierarchies and groups. We will have that later to organize a huge amount of uh, elements. So this is very important. This is very important. 
depending on what you selected, you see this properties editor. And the property editor has different shelves. So with the cube, you see this is these are the properties of the of the cube of this element. You again see our uh, proportions, the scales, and uh, the dimensions, the position. And what we are interested in is this shelf about the material. The cycles renderer selected. We will have we have here. Uh, the choice of different materials. We choose the diffuse BSDF uh, and uh, say this should be plain white, that's fine, but we have to name it and it's called white. So then we can use it for multiple <coughs> objects. In this case we just have this one and a certain material. So select the plane and you see that all this stuff changed corresponding to our selection. Now we need not the material already defined. We want to have a, a, a new material, name it uh, light green ground. <coughs> so, and uh, define this color, go here, go green, go circular, radial and give it a certain darkness. So this should be our ground. That's it. To see that we have to change uh, our uh, render. So we have a selection of renderers. So first step of our design <coughs> is uh, designing the uh, geometry of objects, sculpturing our objects, uh, modeling them. This is done with the uh, wireframe. Second is positioning, uh, constituting them in space. This is in plain white and gray tones. Then we have the material. This is what we arranged here. And then next step is go to the actual imagery, imaginary. So the, the production of the uh, final visual outcome. And this is done with the ray tracing renderer. What we see is the next step, missing light. So for light, we simply have to add a, a, a lamp object and with this ray tracer and that's very beautiful and 90% you simply need the sun. Don't go for others, it's getting messy. So this is very uh, beautiful. So what we have, the sun, it's, it's a zenith uh, directly down and you see it with the shadows. And you only have to adjust, you don't need the location, it's directional light, has no location, no scale, but rotation. So we can go from, from zenith to horizon with y or x. So now it's getting night, somewhere in afternoon, and now you rotate the sun. That's good. Make a little shorter. So this is a nice setup of our shadow. First parameters of the sun. It's just the rotation here. Second is if you select it here, uh, this shelf, the sun, two things. Intensity. You can have it very intense. This is good if you are indoor and want to get uh, color and uh, light from throughout the, the windows, but we don't uh, want that. This is because we are, able, we are in HDMR, HDR, so take it 6 and then we are fine. And the second one is the sharpness of the shadow. So, so uh, this is a super sharp shadow. or Soften it. Yeah. 
So make it super dark. So then it's getting super artificial. My favorite is always around 0.5. So that's the model, it's the light. You don't need more, so that's it. Don't try more, you always get good results. If you don't want to be super specific and don't want to go into details, this is, that's it, with very few parameters. So the next is the camera. <coughs> Again, add an object. It's uh, here, get the camera. We have it here, we can't see it in this renderer. So now it's very important to align the camera to the active, to the actual view. So now we position our camera in orientation and position so that it imitates our actual view. If we want to move with the camera, so we have to lock the camera to our view and now we can change the coordinates and the rotation of the, of the camera. To adjust it properly. So we are running around with the camera to find a proper angle and so on. We also can change the lens. So go camera, this shelf, lens and get another lens with less distortion. Go a few steps back and this is a setup we like. So we can unlock it so that the moment we move it we are free. Press numpad zero and we are back to the camera, back to our so this is our camera, very simple. If you want to see the whole setup, we have to go to uh, the solid or material or wireframe. So, and if we now move and uh, go to material, now this is our setup, a camera with a certain focal length at a certain position, at a certain uh, uh, orientation, the object, the different colors. This is what we uh, model. So we go with zero. This is our. This is how things work. If we want to adjust it, go here. Then we move the camera in space. Go back, and we see how it's working. So go back to the outcome of the image. This was the next step. And then the final step is taking a picture. <coughs> For that we basically use uh, this shelf. We can change the uh, dimensions of the picture. So this is HDMI and uh, we currently render in 50% uh, resolution to be faster. So now let's have a quick preview, a very fast preview of uh, the result. This is pretty much uh, good for orientation. If you want a blueprint or uh, the print of it, just make a quick pre-rendering. So it's uh, here now and you see and this is the final result and in principle we are happy with that. We are now, we left the 3D uh, view editor and uh, had switched to an uh, image editor, so we can leave the image editor, go back to 3D view, and this is where we had been. Uh, go then for final resolution and uh, start the render. And now we are, it's pretty nice how it works. So look at these shadows, look at this edge here nice and sharp. You get the green reflection here, a little green ref reflection here, no green here, so it looks a little red. So, and all this is uh, pretty impressive for this fast setup.
you can see all the <coughs> time memory and here we are it took uh, 48 seconds and uh, that's it to save that we have to define the format and this is with output we go here for high uh, for uncompressed formats like png or t uh, tiff if we want to have a compressed view it's jpeg but then um, you lose quality go for rgb and say save as image go to the renderings i already had the first one so this is my, my second second rendering jpeg save and that's it so we again ended up in the image editor go back to 3d view to continue and now let's check the result um, we have the tutorials renderings and uh, this is our second rendering in jpeg and that's it looks pretty good sharp nice shadows bright and so that's it i hope you it was helpful you enjoyed it give it a like so that others can find it and hopefully see you in the next video thanks